<laughs> of course you're filming it. <clears throat> you guys have pushed me over the edge. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. You good? I'm okay. good. Okay. <laughs> Just give me a second. Just gonna... <clears throat> okay, I think we're good. Welcome to the Orion Training Group YouTube channel. Uh, on today's video, I'm gonna lose my mind because I'm gonna explain everything that I can think of in CQB terms. Uh, I am using a notebook to assist me. That's how far gone I am with this. I've had so many requests and questions for terms and definitions that have to do with CQB because if you're not being trained in this as part of your job or if it's you know new topics to you or whatever, there's a lot of crap that we say that doesn't have another context, like path of least resistance, button hooking, center checking, all this crap. I tried to write a manual on it. Um, just the terms and definitions was like 40 pages because you can get into so much nuance, detail on everything. So as asinine or rudimentary as it may seem, we're gonna go through top to bottom what you might hear on the first day of a class with us. We're gonna kind of limit it to that. Um, first and second day, and we'll go from there. What is a room? Now, people since, I guess, probably before the first ice age have wanted to have some sort of 3D space they could hide in like a cave or whatever. Um, and then as we got more advanced, we started building structures and that led to the problem of if we wanted something from the structure someone else was in, we had to go in there and they fortified. So CQB hasn't really changed since the time when it was unga bunga, you know, I need to mate, to now, <laughs> hold it steady. <laughs> Till now it's, um, you know, I have a search warrant or you broke into my house and I need to enter my own space. Our whole life, uh, as a person is defined on the spaces that we occupy. So in the context of CQB, a room can just be any space in which we have to cross through a threshold to get into it. Um, what is a threshold? Well, that's where the door sits. Uh, typically that is somewhere like 78 feet, 32 to 36 inches wide, uh, like your mom, which is, it could change like in a trailer, it might be 28 to 32 inches. Um, in bigger residences, you might have the 36 inch doors. I have been in houses that had big, nice, solid oak doors that were, you know, 40 something inches that were custom made. So the threshold is just a place where the door sits. Sometimes you have like open floor plans that don't really have a threshold other than when it goes into a room or sometimes they'll have those, you know, eight foot wide openings, but there's still short walls on either side. So don't get twisted on the idea of like, oh, CQB is only about doors. CQB is all about angles but most angles are generated room to room by a threshold. So what types of doors do we have? Well, we could have a center fed door. And if you'll follow me over here, uh, you can tell it's center fed because of the way it is. All right, it's in the center of the door, of, of the wall, right? We have a whole wall and relatively speaking, this is in the center of it. That presents some unique problems like equal threats on either side of the uh, interior of the room. Um, what about corner fed? What's crazy is that's when the door is in the corner of the wall. And it presents less problems to one side because there's a corner there. For example, a corner fed door. All right. Now, unless you're like an Ethiopian Olympian, you're probably not going to hide back there. The army uh, has a term for offset door, which is where you have a corner fed, but it, the door is offset from the corner enough that a person could actually occupy the space behind it. Again, arbitrary terms. Relatively speaking, doors are either more in the center or more in the corner. They present different problems. Um, in the room, uh, we have corners. We keep talking about this. You'll hear deep corner, near corner, far corner, all that kind of stuff. Well, let's talk about it from the outside of the room looking in. A deep corner is a corner I can't actually see all of from the outside. So that is a deep corner. I can't fully see what's in there. But from where I'm at right now, the far corner or the furthest one from me, I can see from the outside. Okay, that's where the, the bottle is in the corner over there. And then you have uh, near corners, which is a deep corner that's close to you. Um, tomato, tomato on all those things, it's just about 
describing on a consistent basis, these terms are going to be the kind of things you could use with your team, right? Like, I got a guy down in the far corner, and everybody understands that means it's the corner across the room. Um, we talked about a little bit about doors, and we debated, Mitchell and I debated getting into push and pull um, and all that kind of stuff. So we talked about what a room is, what the corners are in it, where the door could be positioned in it. But let's talk really quickly about how doors actually function and the terminology surrounding them. From We'll just start right here because this is where we are. From where we are, this would be called a pull door. Some people will call it an inward opening door. Inward as in it is moving in towards me. You can tell that it is a pull door because you can see the barrel of the hinge that is this tubular thing, right? Some of y'all are used to working with those. So if you pulled on the door, pull door, it would open in toward you. If we go to the other side of it, or we just look at this door right here in the hallway, I know it's dark, but alas, I cannot see the barrel of the hinge. And that should immediately tell me that it must be a push door or outward opening. So opens out and away from me, push door, okay? There are people who confuse outward and inward. I've heard people argue till they're blue in the face about what that means. And really all, it, all that changes the definition is where you are relative to the door. So we like to use push and pull because it's way simpler. You're either pushing or pulling the door. And again, it depends on where you're at, but it's a physical action instead of a description of the door. So that's an easy one. There's also commercial doors that have a closure arm. And uh, when we get to the back of the house, I'll show you all that. Closure arm is just a hydraulic doodad that closes the door automatically. Anyway, um, the last thing on actual, like, what is a room terms and definitions would be short walls and long walls. All right, uh, let's look at this room right here. These walls from the inside are relatively the same length. So from the outside, what can I see most of? And I'll use my flashlight to demonstrate for y'all. You should be able to see the, the beam of light on the ground, Mitchell. From out here, because that wall is relatively short, what that means is the distance from this threshold to that corner, a deep corner, is relatively short. And I, you probably can't hide anybody in that corner because you can see that beam is pretty tight to the edge of the wall. But from out here, look at that beam. You probably can fit somebody in that deep corner. And this is what we call the long wall. So that extra two feet of space that it has creates enough depth because of the distance that that deep corner might be a higher priority because there's more likely to be somebody in it. So long wall, short wall just has to do with the length of uh, the length of the wall from the corner to the threshold. So hopefully that was cohesive and made sense to you. If not, there's this rewind feature if you can just watch it again. Um, let's talk about what we say about how we enter the room. There's all these terms and definitions floating around about what I'm doing, not describing the room, but the actions I'm taking. This stuff's all been talked about in other videos. Uh, we have videos about footwork. We have videos about all these techniques individually. And uh, we're going to put the video that we're filming right now, the one that you're watching, into our intro video playlist. You should still go watch all the other more detailed, specific videos about these topics because we're going to expand on them a lot more than just like, here's a button hook, and we're done. So getting into that, we are going to talk a little bit about uh, the scanning point in a room and where you stop in a room because it's relative to the corners, okay? So if I was to enter this room and I stop, I see my corner, clear my sector, and I check on my buddy and keep looking for work, I'm only two steps from the door. I'm about a foot off the wall. This is a limited penetration entry or limb pin. So if you hear limb pin on the internet, that is actually a whole doctrine of movement, but the entry itself, a limited penetration entry, is only going into the room a couple feet off the door. This one's really common and popular for law enforcement because typically there's a bunch of shit in the rooms we're making entry into and you can't do a strong wall or a pod entry, which is really common for the military. Think about the difference in entering a uh, big open floor plan, uh, family seating area in Iraq where you've got not a whole lot of furniture and it's a 20 by 30 room made of adobe, you can fit five guys in there and build an L shape. But in law enforcement hitting a trailer and you know it's a meth lab and there's shit everywhere, 
You're not fitting five guys in a eight by six room. You might fit two. So context of the environment, different things. So we talked, we just mentioned strong wall and we just mentioned pod. So let's talk about what those two actually mean. Um, I'm gonna move this tarp real quick. Okay. Ta-da, a wall. If we were talking about a pod entry or a point of domination, when I make my entry, I don't stop two steps in. I keep scanning my sector just like I always would, but I go from that deep corner to the far corner. And the other teammates that are making entry are building an L shape into that room. So you go two corners deep. If I'm doing a strong wall entry, I go as far to my deep corner as possible in order to be able to let those four or five guys making entry build a strong wall along this wall, right? So I'm still ending up over here, but I'm not stopping here. Tomato, tomato. So pros and cons of all those, we talk about in other videos. Go and watch that stuff. But if you hear the terms, at least now you know, limited penetration entries around two steps into the room, strong wall, filling up along one wall, whichever wall it is, depending on your SOP, and then pod is going two corners deep. So different context, different backgrounds, that's what those things actually are as far as they relate to the geometry of the room itself. We don't use those terms as far as our doctrine, or if you wanna call our program, we call wherever you're stopping your scanning point. Because if I said, hey, Joe Blow, stop in your pod, and he'd be like, oh, I was in the army in 2005, that means two corners deep. Instead, we say, hey, stop in your scanning point. And for us, the scanning point is determined by your manpower. If it's a two-man entry, here's my scanning point. If it's a three or a four-man entry, here's my scanning point because I have to have room for that third or fourth man. Super simple way to do it. So if you hear us say scanning point, it's just where you're stopping and finishing your scan in the room. <clears throat> All right, what about if there's anything else in the room that causes a problem? Rooms aren't just like empty right no furniture and stuff like that even even rooms overseas have a bunch of crap in them dead space first thing we worry about when we go into a room we call it dead space because we can't see behind it okay there is space being generated i can't physically see what's behind it which means i have to go look at it dead space is anywhere that a person could hide behind something we get the question like well what about in kitchen cabinets and stuff yeah, that could be. I have found dudes in cabinets before on search warrants, but that's not something you're usually checking primary. Um, it's big, obvious spaces that people will be. Um, behind couches, behind doors, if they have the space. You know, the curtain in the bathroom or in the shower, um, that kind of stuff. You might do your other checks for like cabinets and stuff on secondary, but that's outside the scope of this video. What's the next most dangerous thing other than that dead space? And again, we're not talking about people yet. It would be what we call adjacent space. Now, adjacent space could be a doorway, right? This is a, an adjacent space to the room that I'm in. It could be an adjacent space into a hallway, like what you just saw. Now, if I'm in this room, that's a big adjacent space that I gotta worry about. So don't get twisted around like open doors, closed doors, this and that. Just think of adjacent space as a general term. Within adjacent space, there are open and closed doors. If I have to define to you what an open and a closed door is, I will never make another video again because you won't be able to find me. All right, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have a fruit stand in Nicaragua or something at that point. It's just not worth it anymore, I swear to God. <sighs> okay, sorry I went on a tangent. <laughs> um, hallway stuff, what is a hallway? It's basically just a really long door. It's a big threshold, okay? <clears throat> if we look at this, would you just look at it? If we look at this, there's not really anywhere for me to go, and I'm stuck in the width of a doorway. We often call doorways like the fatal funnel. What does that mean? Well, you have to pass through that space, which means that the bad guy only has to shoot at that space at the time you're passing through it to potentially hurt you. Well, there's a long ass funnel, and you will often hear the term, you know, rent hallways, own, <clears throat> own rooms. So if you're gonna rent the hallway, that just means don't spend a unnecessary amount of time in it. This is just a, just a basic hallway. It leads to the next problem, nothing complicated. 
but oftentimes hallways do present complications and there are terms that you will hear across different doctrines to describe those problems, which we're going to show you next. Okay, this is what we might call a T-shaped intersection. It looks like the letter T, which the FBI would call a clue. That means you have a terminal wall to your front and you have a danger area to your left and to your right. Okay? If that confused you because I said left and then right, it's because I'm facing the camera. All right? Left and then right. This is a room. All right? This is another hallway. The shape that this hallway actually makes, you call an L-shaped hallway, and there's a specific technique that a lot of people would teach and show for this. Um, the T-shape or the three-way intersection, there's a lot of techniques and specific ways to solve that. L-shaped hallway, right? This is a wall now. And all you're worrying about is this angle here on this corner. That's a specific problem that you'll see taught with certain definitions, but at least now you know three-way or T-shape and then L-shaped hallway. Come on down, we'll talk about the next cluster. If we just had one of these doors in play and this was out, right? So just that, just that door is a problem. We call that a single hallway problem. But in discussing the production of this video, Mitchell made the point that it's kind of also a T-shape, right? It's like a little Tetris piece. It's got that little boop on that side for the long stick. It's like four pieces. I forget what they actually call that. Anyway, this is still a T, but I'm not approaching it from the long leg with two problems adjacent. What are our two problems in this space? That's right, long thread and near thread. And that's a definition you'll hear a lot but the long thread or the far thread and then the near thread is a kind of an algorithmic thing. Near thread usually takes priority because it's closer to you. And the closer you are to that angle, the more risk you are. So if I was just, just walk past this door with no other good reason or stimulus, there are angles of exposure that I'm not covering and I need to handle this near thread before I go to the far thread, okay? So this is a single hallway problem. Two hallway problems across from each other, you might hear it called opposing open doors. If one of the doors is closed, it's an open and closed door posing. A lot of places reduce all that descriptive terminology down to just a four-way intersection. You'll hear some places call it an X intersection. Some places call it a complex intersection, complex X, complex hallway. All that means is that now you've got everything to worry about. So what's in front of you? What's to your left? Because that's y'all's left watching. Stage left and right, okay? And of course, if we're working in a small unit, you have to worry about what's behind you. So if you hear the term rear security, that means that whatever we're doing, the priority of work that we're moving toward, you have somebody watching that back because for whatever reason, that's a danger area involved in your movement. When we talk about threats in a hallway, we have the far threat, the near threat, we have the rear threat, all right? Our terminology to make it easy for you guys, because generally everyone knows how time works, future, and past. Future is anything we haven't done yet, right? So from me standing here, all of that is future threats, and our team would have to make the choice of which threat takes priority, which in this case would be one of the near threats. From there in the algorithm, whichever near threat we can tackle that either is the smallest piece of the pie, which you might hear the term skin of the ship. For example, this is the skin of the ship. This is the side of the building that's terminal. I'm gonna wanna go eat that piece of the pie first because I'm gonna be able to close that room off and say it's done, it doesn't have any refeeds. If you hear the term refeed, that means that, or adjacent uh, common doors, adjacent doors, that means that somebody, after we clear that room, can refeed back into it from another part of the structure. So future could be any of those things. And we have to make our choices on what we do next based on that sort of algorithmic decision making. Anything behind us is, you guessed it, the past. All the past stuff is less important at all times than the future in the absence of stimulus. Now, if you hear the word stimulus, it's not that check that Joe Biden sent you. It is an indication that something is happening, right? Um, is we getting third stimulus check, the famous Google search? That could be a noise, a gunshot, a door opening, right? A car door closing, whatever. I'm facing this direction. It's future. I have no other stimulus. And I hear something behind me. I might be like, yo. That's stimulus, okay? You're gonna hear that a thousand times in almost any doctrine, okay? So that's kind of all the stuff in hallways. Uh, my notes just said, talk about hallway shit. I think I covered it all. 
The last thing is a terminal door, right? Or the hallway, we call it like a terminal door in a hallway. There's a lot of um, terms that you could use for this. This is something you might see in houses, um, older style homes, and often those two doors right next to where the camera is would be here. So you end up in a three-way at the end of the hallway, but it's just a room. It doesn't keep going as a hall. So you have door, door, and door, and you gotta make your decision based on basically all three equal near threats. Usually in that situation as well, they're all skin of the ship because it's the edge of the house. So in older like ranch style homes, you'll get to this kind of cluster at the end of the, end of the, the house and it's like, holy shit, right? What kind of door was that? That's right, that was a push door. All right, closure arm. I told you we'd get to it eventually. Okay, they don't have hooked up. Come so, the closure arm on residential doors, not really a thing you're ever gonna see unless you're in some like really bougie house. In a structure like um, an office, a school, a restaurant, whatever, you'll often see some bolts up here and that gives it away if we were on that side. But you have this kind of hydraulic system. And what that does is when this arm is connected, we have the ability to you know, connected or whatever, so we can teach both. It will push the door back closed for you. That's gonna change a little bit about how you address this door because you know that as you manipulate it and open it, it's gonna swing back closed on you. All right, uh, that actually reminded me of one thing we didn't talk about in hallways. So let's go back there real quick and look at it. So we didn't talk about inside and outside man. Um, in the positions in the hallway. If there's, there's a me here, me one, and me two, and our direction of travel is left or right, there's an inside and an outside man based on those directions. So if we wanna go into that room, I'm the inside man. The outside man is holding security. Remember we talked about the 45 in other videos, and we're gonna talk about in this video again, depth into this room. So you have inside and outside man. This outside man who's looking into the room in some doctrines is called a gatekeeper, um, delivery boy. Um, it's all these different terms. Essentially his job is to just hold security until the entry, the inside man and his team that are stacked on the near threat side make their entry and then he can continue to hold security on whatever else. So anyway, the closure arm reminded me of that. We just talked about how when this door opens, um, and it starts to close back on you, it might change your tactics a little bit. Now, what does that actually mean? We haven't talked about any actual systems of tactics yet. That brings me into dynamic and deliberate. I could, you know, wax philosophic about this for five hours, but we'll break it down really quickly. Dynamic is an entire system of tactics, but it will also describe entry methods. Deliberate is an entire system of tactics, but it will also describe entry methods. If you hear someone say dynamic tactics and they're not talking about a simple entry method, they're talking about, if they know what they're saying, things like low light, no knock raids supported by dynamic elements like flashbangs, multiple breach points, distractions, breaking rate teams. Um, all of those elements serve to distract somebody on the inside of the building and to throw off their OODA loop. If you have never heard the term OODA loop, it stands for Observe, Orient, Decide, Act, and it comes from a fighter pilot who was talking about the science of surprising the enemy fighter jet pilot and being able to kill them in a dogfight because he was ahead of their decision curve. So dynamic tactics are just about resetting the opponent's decision curve and being ahead of the game using momentum. You'll hear momentum spoken of often in these things. Momentum just means our ability to get from point A to point B in the structure without lagging or slowing while having continuous distractions. Deliberate kind of is on the opposite side of that spectrum. Deliberate is about only moving at a certain speed that you can process, uh, using cover and concealment more. For example, the difference between moving surreptitiously through a house, surreptitious clearance is like picking locks. I took my shoes off so I could sneak and not make creaking noises to deliberate is, I'm not being that quiet, but I'm not throwing flashbangs into every room white light breaking all the windows and stuff. Deliberate is we're moving at a relatively smooth speed, trying to use threshold assessments, working from outside the door, uh, we're using call outs, we're doing a lot of other things before we make entry into the room to try to reduce our uh, risk. 
So they are both built around risk, uh, assuaging risk, but the risk that you're getting rid of is the same, it's just in different ways and it's different priorities. Dynamic systems of tactics use distraction, deliberate systems of tactics try to use cover, concealment, call outs, all this other kind of stuff. When we talk about dynamic tactics as far as entry methods go, that's things like hitting the room with a path of least resistance or a button hook. Um, deliberate could be doing a pan or a pie first and then making the entry. So don't get it twisted on all that. We're actually gonna work into what all those terms and definitions mean. And uh, I think you probably agree the lighting is better in the other room. So let's go back in there and we'll talk about actual tactics. We're back. We're so back is what the kids would say these days. So we talked about systems of tactics. Um, what about actual movements? You'll hear panning, pieing, center checking, flowing, button hooking, double panning, cross coverage, split stack, blah, 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 all this shit. It all, for the most part, is fluid language. People are gonna use whatever term their team uses and they're gonna act like that's the only fucking way to talk about it. That's dumb. For example, I've heard button hooks called running a J. It's like, brother, I have no idea what you're saying. He's like, you know, it's, it's a J and you look the other way from where you're walking. We had to have this whole discussion on like what he was actually talking about before we could even have the conversation about the tactic. So for this portion of the video, I'm gonna tell you a whole bunch of terms for the same thing so that we can make sure that you have uh, you know, the equipment you need. You can put on the full armor of God before you go into the Instagram comment section. So let's look at this door. This is just the best light, easiest demo. <clears throat> Pying is the slowest thing you can do outside of a door. And it is generally just eating small pieces of the pie as you move. I'm not gonna go into the how and why and all that, but it typically looks something like this where you're eating small pieces at a time, all right? It's not a fluid movement. Panning is similar, but it is a fluid movement. So I am simply gonna walk all the way around the door while looking into the room, minimizing what's exposed, maximizing what I can see, moving at the speed I can process. People will use the terms pieing and panning interchangeably, but they are not the same technique. You'll hear people say, yeah, I pie the door, and then they go and pan it, all right? It's just because between law enforcement, the military, and everybody on the internet, terms get garbled, and that's okay. You have to actually understand what they really meant, okay? Um, the next thing that comes off of that has like 18 names. Um, those two were more deliberate, working from the outside the threshold. This one's a little bit more dynamic, but it's kind of in the middle. It's an entry method, but it still allows you to see into the room. And it's called center checking, step center, center stepping, 90 plus 10, um, what's the other one? Center plus 10, uh, there's a few more, flashing 12, which is my favorite, and a couple other names. It is literally just getting back out to that middle prior to making your entry. And it's a not a stop and a pause and wait and breathe and all that because you're just kind of hanging out in the doorway at that point. That's all of those terms, we just call it a center check. Um, actually getting into the room has really only two ways to do it. You're either gonna go the direction you're looking, or you're gonna go the other direction. Go in the direction you're looking is called flowing, sliding, path of least resistance. Uh, I actually never heard sliding until I had a conversation with a guy like six months ago, and he was like, why are y'all always sliding in the rooms? And I was like, brother, I have never slid into a room. And he meant following path of least resistance. He did not mean like sliding, you know, Call of Duty style. Um, and then there's button hooking. So sliding is literally just walking into the room the direction I'm looking. Super complicated. Um, really uh, you gotta pay a lot of money to learn how to do this. But um, button hooking is just doing that the other direction. So if I were to just walk into the room the other way, I have now button hooked and I am a CQB master, right? Look how crazy this is. Y'all didn't know you could do that. It's just walking around. There's some other stuff that goes into this. You'll hear double pan. And that would be where if there was another guy on the other side of the threshold, we both pan out to the 90. So deep corner check. Remember we talked about deep corners. I'm at the 45. I come out to the 90. I return to the 45 and then I can make my entry. Double panning is a 45-90 hybrid of all this other stuff. If you hear the 45-90 technique, that is I snap out to the 45, I snap out to the 90, and then I make my entry. Um, there's things like heavy side entry. Heavy side just means that the side with more people on it conducts their entry first. 
Then there's the other side of the, the aisle of a crisscross entry. That's where two people across from each other crisscross into the room, both doing a path of least resistance. Um, there's things like running the rabbit. We'll talk about it on this corner fit. We got a whole video on this, but just terms for you guys that are a little extra special. If I walk in, there's my thread over there. I walk in looking at the thread. That is me running the rabbit. I'm moving laterally while looking at my thread. If I was to walk in looking at the thread, walking towards it, that's pushing the thread. It's just two ways of handling a uh, corner fed room. <clears throat> in the hallway, we talked about a few different things, um, different techniques here and there. You may hear the term angle man and corner boy, and it's not the guys from SpongeBob. It's where if you're in an L-shaped hallway, the guy who's got the angle into the hall is the angle man. And the guy who's just kind of stuck on the corner is the corner boy. Running the rabbit plays right into that because it comes from hallway techniques. The guy who's holding that angle into the hall can launch out laterally across the hall. I'm going to show you that real quick. It's not complicated. You can do it right here, actually. So if I'm on the outside edge, I'm the outside man like we talked about, I have it more angle into this room. Picture I'm here. This is the corner boy. I'm like... I don't have much, right? The angle man has that option to run the rabbit while looking at the only threat left, and all that leaves is the corner boy to simply snap his corner. All right, that's angle man and corner boy. There's also a method called peak pause push. Uh, Shane at the Guild first showed me that years ago, and uh, it comes from high level units. You peak and you pause, working using this uh, cover and concealment, right, I'm peaking. This looks a whole lot like pawing, doesn't it? And if there's not a threat there, after I've paused and assessed, I can push out and give my guy room to snap around the edge of that corner. So, super, super simple stuff. That is, relatively speaking, most of the terms that you will hear on day one, day one and a half, two day of our class. We've covered like 50 things. Um, now, you may also hear me say words like accoutrement, uh, lanyap, uh, things like that. That's just Cajun French words, and you got to earn the right for me to explain what that is. So come to a class, and I'll I'll probably poke fun at you and say some Cajun French at you and stuff like that. Real talk. Um, probably the biggest criticism we've gotten in the last three years is you guys don't have a terms list. I need to understand what you're saying. That always irked me because I'm like, it's not about memorizing the words; it's about being able to do the movements but the students are never wrong in that sense. If they need to learn that way, as an instructor, you need to hear what they're saying. And, okay, this guy's, a, this guy's a nerd. He's got to read the term to remember what it is. Um, cool. I have to write stuff down. I'm a print learner. I have, Mitchell can tell you, I've got a planner, I've got a notebook, and I put it on my phone. So I have to write it down like three times, and then it's, it's in there, and I'll still miss stuff. So this video is for you. If you were the guy who was like, like, I want a terms list. Here you go. Um, it's a lot, and I know it was done in video format instead of like giving you a printout or a manual, but the printout or the manual doesn't have a visual demonstration and an example. So this is basically a living manual that you can go back and watch. Um, what's crazy is if you take notes on everything I said, you'll have a written one. So just handle that on your own. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Um, I know I'm, I'm kind of being a dick, uh, but that's it's just because I haven't eaten yet and I'm hungry and I need my coffee. And you guys really annoyed me with this. So um, thanks for watching, I guess, or whatever. In conclusion, which is something you should never say at the end of a video, if you have questions, comments, concerns, especially if you have another term for one of the things we talked about, I want to hear about it. Um, you know, if your team calls, you know, button hunting the Fliberty Gibbet 123, I want to know that because if I hear some asshole come to class and he's like, well, that's not how they taught it at, um, you know, whatever school, I will be more prepared. I have learned so much from students coming into classes and being like, hey, that's not what we call it. We call it this because of this reason. And I get to add that to my repertoire, which is another French word. Anyway, we're a small business. Uh, if people don't know we exist, we won't keep growing. Uh, please like this video. Please share it to your friends if you thought it was at least entertaining, if not informative. Um, we would love to see you in a class in person. We have something like 50, 60 courses for this year, 2024. Um, 
Of course, if you're watching this at any other point in time, just go check the website, oriontraininggroup.com. We teach civilians, we teach law enforcement, we teach the military. Everything we have is open enrollment, obviously, unless you're in a private class with us. And that means that you could be a welder, you could be a doctor, you could flip hamburgers at McDonald's, and we will teach you the basics of how to become a modern American rifleman and understanding these things is what we believe is part of your constitutional rights uh, under the Second Amendment. So check us out. Um, if you can't make it to classes and you still want this kind of information in weekly or bi-weekly updates, check out the Patreon. We have a Patreon that teaches all this kind of stuff. Uh, if you're into Legos, I use Legos as demos a lot. Um, all these types of tactics, terms, definitions, we write articles and things like that. Um, can't thank you all enough for watching. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let us know. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share. Quit watching porn, repent, turn to Christ.